Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Completionist. So anyway guys, uh, this is going to be my uh, final video, uh, you know, before I got to go back to uh, Alberta. I finally got the uh, call to go back there on, uh, on Thursday, uh, May the 14th, so I just wanted to uh, get one more video made, you know, before I have to go back out west to work. Um, yeah, I consider myself pretty lucky, you know, to even uh, still have a job, you know, during this uh, pandemic, so... Uh, I got to stay home a little uh, longer than I normally do, but you know, uh, I've had enough time off and now I just gotta focus on getting back to my job and you know, doing it uh, in a uh, safe and uh, responsible manner. So for this video guys, uh, what I wanted to talk about is a video game that I pretty much uh, spent the majority of my time playing. And, uh, and I wanted to, you know, share my history with this game and, uh, and my thoughts on it. And this game and me kind of have a very strange uh, history together because for as much as I love this game series, it's only this year that I finally managed to sit down and play the first entry of that series. And as you can see from the title, the video game that I'm going to talk to you about is Valkyrie Profile for the PSP, but it was originally released for the PlayStation 1 as well. So, the version that I actually played uh, while I was home was the uh, PSP version of uh, Valkyrie Profile, just because of the uh, of the new uh, CGI cutscenes and uh, and things along those lines. You know, I always had a lot of fondness for this series, but it's kind of funny for me because I developed a fondness for this series without even playing the first entry. And it's really kind of strange, especially my history with this game series, is because I have actually tried to pick up and play this game several times throughout my life. And for one reason or another, I either just lost interest or, you know, something else came up. But I wanted to rectify that this year because uh, it was just always one of those PS1 RPGs that I really wanted to sit down and play. So how did I get introduced to Valkyrie Profile? Well, I got introduced to, to Valkyrie Profile um, when, I, uh, when I stayed at my aunt's house in Pasadena uh, when I was going to university. I remember going to a local uh, video store there. And you know, even though I couldn't really rent any video games, you know, people know my history in university. You know, when I went to university, I didn't really have any video game systems with me, not until, you know, the later years. And you know, I remember, you know, going to the video store and you know, I was very well aware of, you know, all these awesome anime style JRPGs that, you know, were released for the, for the PS1. It was just a crying shame that, you know, I never had a chance to play any of them, especially when it got released. So, you know, I was just going through the PS1 section and all of a sudden, you know, I seen this, uh, I, I seen this cover. So I, so I decided, you know, to look on the back of it. And, and the first thing I noticed that, that really caught my eye was the uh, was the back screen in the game? It's actually that little screen up there, and and one of the things that it showcased was Arngrim's really huge ass sword. And I'm just saying, wow, you know, this game looks really beautiful, and the sprite work looks uh, looks really beautiful. And then I just pretty much put the game back, you know, uh, you, you know, at the rental place, and you know, just uh, and just went on my way. And uh, this was around, I think, 2000, 2001. And uh, fast forward, you know, to 2005. Now, I had owned, you know, a few, you know, PS1 RPGs at that time. And, uh, you know, I had owned, you know, my original copy of Xenogears, which I still have to this day. You know, I had, I had Lunar Silver Star Story. I had, uh, I had Final Fantasy VII, great, uh, Greatest Hits, and I had a few other games as well. And uh, in 2005 was really when my video game collecting really started to take off. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to focus on uh, getting was all those PS1 uh, JRPGs that you know I missed out on. 
and uh, one of the first ones that I actually bought uh, was Valkyrie Profile. And uh, I bought Valkyrie Profile on eBay back in 2005. I think I purchased it for over a hundred dollars, which was kind of crazy because you know the because uh, the video game collecting scene hadn't really you know really jumped up in price you know with 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 regards to a lot of the games but you know I really wanted the game that bad and I didn't have an eBay account but thankfully uh, my wife did and you know in 2005 you, you know we were only dating for a year and you know I told her that you know I really really wanted to play this game and uh, and my wife was aware of Valkyrie Profile but she had never played it either but my wife is a huge Star Ocean fan so you know she uh, she seen that it was Enix, you know. She seen it was c composed by Matoya Sakurabata. I probably butchered that, but uh, but uh, so so because it share a lot of similars with uh, sorry similarities with the Star Ocean series, you know, she actually bought it for me. So you know, when we actually got the game in the mail, um, my wife actually played it first. You know, she played the very first dungeon in the game. And, you know, I had watched her play it because, you know, at that time, you know, for as much as I loved playing video games, I loved watching my wife play video games as well. But, you know, back in the mid-2000s was roughly around my time, or roughly around the time where my wife started to lose interest in, in video games. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, you know, it is what it is. And so I watched her play the first level. And you know, I was uh, I was very impressed with with how the game looked um, and how the game sounded. I was really impressed with the voice acting in the game, and uh, but you know, my wife wasn't overly fond of it. You know, she didn't really like the platforming. You know, she didn't like the fact that you had to kneel down and you know press the attack button, you know, to open up treasure chests. And after she had played the uh, the first dungeon and you know beat the uh, elder vampire, she just she just put it back down and uh, and she never played it again. Now you'd think that you know the moment that she finished playing with it, you know, I would play it. And I don't know why I didn't. I think I was in the middle of playing something else at that time. So I was just grateful to have the game because even in 2005, you know, it was still an incredibly uh, sought after game and unfortunately it was one of those games that didn't have a very high print run, especially especially in the North American market. So it pretty much, you know, sat by the wayside, you know, it sat in my PS1 collection. So eventually, uh, you know, we ended up getting a PSP and uh, now, now we got a PSP very early in, in the PSP lifespan. And unfortunately, in the very early days of the PSP, the gaming library wasn't the greatest, and there wasn't a lot of JRPGs, you know, released for the system. But one of the first ones that did get released that really caught our eye is that Valkyrie Profile was getting a, uh, a not necessarily a remake, but yeah, but yeah, but it was getting a port to the uh, to the PSP, and and we had actually uh, purchased it because we said, great, you know, this is another great opportunity, you know, to play. Valkyrie Profile on the go, and uh, and we we ended up grabbing it. And at least one of the good things with with the PSP, as you know, is they added brand new uh, CGI cutscenes. And uh, so you know, we ended up getting it. And you know, uh, the moment the game got uh, got released, you know, we got it at EB Games, and you know, we did get it with the uh, strategy guide as well. And when we got the PSP version. You know, I really made it a mission to really give the, give the game a try. So, you know, I picked it up, I put it in the PSP version, but usually when I play a game, because, you know, I still tentatively complete games to 100%, you know, I started to do my research on it. And, you know, I discovered that, you know, the original Valkyrie profile, you know, it has three endings. But as I started to do more research into the game and, you know, with regards to completing it, uh, I was actually quite turned off with how some of the mechanics in the game worked. Because this game, unfortunately, has a few things in JRPGs that I really don't like. Like, for example, I don't like the fact that 
this game is kind of on a time limit. You know, you have to be very focused on your movements. You know, you just can't go anywhere and visit anywhere you like uh, because, you know, you have these requirements that you need to meet, you know, uh, in each chapter. I don't like the fact that weapons break in the game. And the fact that there's really no currency in the game either. You know, there's no shops where you can buy, uh, buy items. You know, you, you know, you get items by, by getting, like, uh, the spiritual points. You know, you get at the end of the level, or, you know, sometimes you can, you can transmute items, you know, into, uh, into points as well. And, you know, you get items that way. And, uh, and that really kind of turned me off from it, because it made me think that playing the game was going to be a, a real chore. And it's just that I found out that, you know, in order to get the best ending in the game, you really need a guide. You know, you need to follow it, like, right to the letter, because there's so many things that, you know, you can mess up on, that, you know, you won't be able to get the best ending in the game. And, you know, I played the game, and, you know, I, uh, I beat the first dungeon, beat the Elder Vampire, but it's just like, when I started to get into the next chapter, I was kind of too afraid to actually, uh, to actually uh, pursue it any further because I, I had thought, you know, I had already messed up and, 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 and things along those lines because a Valkyrie Profile, it's a very hard game to, to recommend, especially, you know, to people who are new to the JRPG genre because, like, there is a lot of research that you need to do with the game in order to uh, excel at it because it's very easy to get stuck, it's very easy to go into a dungeon, you know, when you're not properly leveled, and to and to make matters worse, even though it's not really a disadvantage, but if you want to get the absolute most out of the game, you have to play the game on hard mode, because playing the game on hard mode, you know, gives you access to all the characters, and it gives you access to some of the best weapons in the game. So. I'd actually beaten the first dungeon, and I got scared to, uh, to pursue it even further. So I ended up putting it down, and I hadn't played it again for a really long time. Now, this is what's really strange, because the first time that I did go up to Alberta, you know, I took my uh, PS2 with me. And one of the games that I took with me, strangely enough, was Valkyrie Profile 2. And as funny as this sounds, I had actually beaten Valkyrie Profile 2 before I had even beaten Valkyrie Profile 1. And I think, ultimately, that was probably a huge mistake. But unfortunately, I didn't do my proper research into Valkyrie Profile 2 when it got released for the, for the PS2. And it was in Valkyrie Profile 2 that I really developed a huge love for the series. Because I thought it was okay to play Valkyrie Profile 2 before Valkyrie Profile 1, because the funny thing about Valkyrie Profile 2, from what people told me, is that Valkyrie Profile 2 is a sequel, uh, sorry, is a prequel. It takes place a thousand years before the events of Valkyrie Profile 1. And unfortunately, I allowed myself to become really ignorant, because even though probably 60 to 70 percent of the game is a story that strictly takes place, uh, you know, a thousand years, you know, in the past before the events of Valkyrie Profile 1. Eventually, at around the 70 percent mark of the game, it connects to Valkyrie Profile 1. And when I got to experience that, uh, that kind of plot twist, um, I was kind of lost. I said, ah, oh, crap, I should have played Valkyrie Profile 1 before I actually played this. But it was actually through my love of Valkyrie Profile 2 that really developed my fondness for that series. Because Valkyrie Profile 2 has, has the luxury of being quite a few important things in my life with regards to my JRPG tastes. Uh, for, uh, for one, I think it has one of the best uh, JRPG battle systems that I've ever played. It's not my all-time favorite. My all-time favorite battle system for any JRPG is The Legend of Dragoon. Uh, it has one of uh, 
just just one of the best uh, musical scores I've ever heard in a JRPG. But most importantly, Valkyrie Profile 2 has my favorite JRPG villain of all time. I'm not going to say who it is, because that would be a big spoiler, you know, for those who, who haven't played it. But the villain in Valkyrie Profile 2, and especially the person who voices him, is... Uh, is just grade A voice acting. And the villain is just so despicable that you can't help but like admire him a little bit because the because the villain is completely batshit insane. And 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 it's just crazy because one of the other biggest things I loved about Valkyrie Profile 2 is that it had some of my favorite over-the-top attacks that I had ever seen in any uh, JRPG. You know, I love all the finishing strikes in uh, in Valkyrie Profile 2, and it's just the uh, and it's just like I I would never ever get tired of seeing the same animation over and over and over again. They were just that awesome, and you know one of my uh, one of one, one of my favorites has always been Freya's uh, Efer Strike, and it's just and, and and it's just so awesome because one thing I've always loved about the Valkyrie Profile series as a whole is that I've always loved the audio dialogue in the game because uh, it's just like everybody has like really great victory quotes, battle quotes, battle cries, op uh, opening dialogue and, uh, and it was really my love of Valkyrie Profile 2 that uh, that really cemented like my love of that series even though I had never beaten the original Valkyrie Profile game and and that's completely crazy so you know fast forward to 2010 and I decided to start my YouTube channel and you know every YouTube channel you know every user you know needs their avatar and the and the avatar that I picked was uh, this one and it's actually a uh, Lenef from uh, Valkyrie Profile Lenef from uh, for the uh, PSP because it's just a beautiful piece of art. You know, I love I love the blues and I love the gray and I love the uh, and I love the angel wings and it's just it's just such a beautiful piece of art and and for as long as I have had my YouTube channel, I've always had that avatar. And, and that will never change because for as much as I love that piece of art, uh, I actually love Lenef as a character. Um, you know, in, in Valkyrie Profile Lenef, you know, she just provides a sense, a strong sense of moral obligation. You know, she can be stern, she can be focused, she can be very persuasive, and, uh, but beneath it all, she actually has a kind heart. And even though she's governed by duty, you know, she brings out a feeling of, of tenderness that, you know, be behind the tough exterior, you know, lies a gentle soul. And and it's for that reason and many other reasons that I love Lenef as a character, and and it's it's just a wonderful character to experience, even though she is the main focus of the first Valkyrie Profile game, and she has more of a supporting role, you know, in Valkyrie Profile Two. Uh, you know, she doesn't show up until you know the last uh, the last ten to fifteen percent of the game. But uh, but uh, but I'm glad that you know she uh, she had an opportunity you know to showcase you know her talent you know in the uh, in Valkyrie Profile too. So let's uh, let's uh, let's fast forward again to uh, ten years later and uh, and actually finally getting a chance to sit down and really play it, play this game. I think one of the reasons why I really wanted to motivate myself to play it is because I had already played Valkyrie Profile 2, I kind of had a rough idea of uh, what was going on, but I really wanted to enjoy the game from its very humble beginnings. So before I had played the game, and I actually had tried to pick up and play Valkyrie Profile, the original one, 
you know, a couple more times, but I always kept getting stuck in the first and second dungeon, and then all of a sudden I lost interest because I thought I'd messed up and, you know, uh, not did something right. And then I'm one of those guys that, you know, if I screw up my completionist run, I'll just delete the file and I'll start all the way over. And, you know, and that can be incredibly demot uh, demotivating. You know, if you if you get a couple of dungeons in and you realize that you know you didn't do something right, and uh, and and then you have to start back over. But I think one of the things that helped when I actually started Valkyrie Profile up this time is I did my research. Uh, I knew exactly what to do, how to do it, and what to watch out for. And I had to do, you know, a lot of a, a lot of research. You know, one of the biggest problems that, you know, I have with a lot of, uh, a lot of video game guides, you know, especially, you know, from Brady Games and Prima and, and, you know, a few others is even though, you know, like they're really good at showcasing a lot of things, I find they always miss, miss a couple of things and because of that, you know, you can't complete it to 100%. But one of the best things about this, this guide is this guide is excellent. Uh, this pretty much showcases just about everything you need to know with regards to completing this game and you know uh, getting the best uh, ending in the game as well. So if you have a chance to ever play uh, Valkyrie Profile, look this uh, guide up and you know uh, try to see if you can uh, find it for yourself because it's an excellent resource especially if you want to uh, complete this game to 100%. So you guys got to take a sip of juice, throat's getting dry. So I started playing Valkyrie Profile this winter for the very first time. Played the game on hard mode and I'm going for the best ending. So what did I think of it? I love this game, hands down. Um, is it my favorite JRPG of all time? No. Uh, Xenogears will probably still always hold that title, but this game is pretty damn close. You know, I think one of the biggest things I love about Valkyrie Profile is that this game is so unapologetically tragic. This is a dark game. This is a very depressing game. Now, this isn't really much of a spoiler, but basically what, what uh, Lenef is, is that she's a Valkyrie that collects souls in order to bring the Valhalla, you know, to fight in Ragnarok. So each of your party members that you have in this game, you get to see how each and every one of them die. And that is incredibly depressing. Because one of the biggest things I really love about Valkyrie Profile is they really took the time to give each of the supporting uh, characters in this game their own little backstory. Their kind of own little history of who they are, what they are, and you know how they eventually perish. And you can't help but feel bad for a lot of the uh, characters that end up dying in this game and uh, and how they become uh, uh, warriors of Valhalla. And I think this is one of the game's biggest strengths is that I haven't seen a lot of games that really look at death and uh, and show how you know each of of your party members actually die. And a lot of the stories for a lot of these characters are really tragic. And uh, it's just something that I've never ever seen done in another JRPG before. And I think it's one of the game's greatest strengths. Because, uh, because each of these characters has a really amazing backstory. And you know, for those who haven't played the game before, I highly recommend, you know, you play uh, Sorry, you watched a prologue before you actually played the game because you actually get to see how how Lenef comes to be and and how the journey actually starts. 
and it is incredibly sad, and it is incredibly tragic. And I love the fact that the game pulls no punches. It's, you know, you know, some of these storylines for, for some of these characters are absolutely gut-wrenching. And it's just that, uh, you know, especially when, you, when, when some of the people play this game for the first time, you know, uh, if you come across a character by the name of Yume, her story is really incredibly tragic. And it's just that I love the fact that, that the game doesn't sugarcoat things. It shows that, that the world that Lenef is in is a very harsh world. And it's just that there's no time for, for sympathy because, you know, she, uh, she's on a mission. You know, she has to, she has to collect warriors, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to fight in Ragnarok. And it's just that, uh, and it's just every time you do a spiritual concentration, that was always my favorite part of the game, was just, was just doing the spiritual concentration so that I got to see which character I was going to recruit and to see what path that they were going to go on that would eventually lead to their death. Because it's like I said before, I think that's the game's strongest point, is that it handles death very depressing, but very fair. And it's it's something that I don't really see a lot of games do. So, you know, other great things you know I want to talk about this game is the game's art. Um, Especially, you know, the, uh, the character portraits. Um, it's just, it's just beautiful. Just the, uh, uh, just the character designer for Valkyrie Profile. Uh, they didn't really make the game anime style per se, but they put a lot of detail into all these characters. And there's a ton of playable characters in this game. And they each have their own tragic backstory, and that's awesome. And, uh, and, and one of the things I love about the art is, you know, especially how the eyes are drawn. And it's just that, uh, and, and it's just, all the characters just have so much detail and so much feeling and so much emotion, you know, uh, you, you know in their artwork. And, uh, and another thing that I love about the game is the, is the voice acting. Um, you know, a lot of people often, you know, make fun of the voice acting that was used for a lot of PS1 JRPGs. Um, you know, not even PS1 JRPGs, but, you know, PS1 games in particular, because, because a lot of the games, you know, didn't really have the greatest of voice acting. You know, some games that had some really excellent voice acting, you know, for the PS1 was, was the original Metal Gear Solid. But Valkyrie Profile, you know, took great care you know, in getting some grade A uh, quality voice talent. And it's just that, you know, if you haven't played this game before, and you know, if you were a kid in the 90s, when, oh, when you get to listen to some of these characters, you're going to hear those voices before. Because the voice actors and actresses that put their work in this game did some very popular uh, uh, cartoons, you know, uh, you know, in the 90s and, and in the early 2000s. You know, there's a lot of alumni, you know, from Pokemon and, uh, and Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, uh, Lenef, you know, she's voiced by Megan Hollinshead. And uh, she's most notably known for, you know, uh, playing uh, Nurse Joy and also uh, My Valentine, you know, from, uh, from Yu-Gi-Oh. But it's just like, uh, but it's just like, even in Pokemon, like the voice actors for Ash, Veronica Taylor, Brock, Eric Stewart, and Misty, uh, Rachel Lillis, they all lend their voice work to, uh, in this game. And it's absolutely amazing. And, they, and each of these voice actors and actresses actually voice multiple roles, you know, throughout this, uh, 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 throughout this game. And it really shows their, their wide range of uh, voice talent. And, uh, and, you know, I really got to give the voice work on Valkyrie Profile an A+, because, you know, they, they went all out when it came to, you know, providing some really excellent voice work in this game. And, you know, it does break my heart a bit because, you know, I do watch a lot of interviews, you know, for a lot of various uh, voice actors, especially, you know, for, uh, for a lot of the voice actors that, that put work in this game and nobody ever asks, asks them about this game. And it's such a damn crying shame because, 
because their work in this game is absolutely amazing. You know, uh, you know, I would love to meet uh, Megan Hollinshead or you know anyone who's actually put their uh, voice talent uh, in the Valkyrie Profile series and actually get them, you know, to sign uh, sign the game because like that is one of the biggest positives you know, of Valkyrie Profile, and not even the original game, but, uh, but you know, even the uh, sequel, Valkyrie Profile 2 as well, is the, uh, is the voice work. And the voice work is top-notch, and even though a lot of the voice actors didn't, uh, didn't make their way to Valkyrie Profile 2, except for Lenef, you know, Megan Holland said, you know, she still voiced Lenef in uh, Valkyrie Profile 2, but you know, even the voice talent in Valkyrie Profile 2 was was absolutely amazing. You know, uh, Freya in uh, in the Valkyrie Profile 1 was voiced by Ver Veronica Taylor, and in Valkyrie Profile 2 she was uh, voiced by Kirsten Potter. And even though the voices were vastly different, but it still fit the character perfectly. And uh, and I just really love the voice work of that game. So going into the game, a game itself, guys, like it's not a very easy game to pick up and play. You know, when you pick up and play this game for the first time, you really have to learn how to how this game works because you are on a time limit, and you have to watch every movement you make because you only have a certain amount of time in each chapter to get everything done that you need to get done and if you end up dying in a dungeon or you know if you have to leave a dungeon you know to to either uh, stock up on items or you know to to recover anything like that you're going to lose more time periods so you know if you do go into playing this game you know you have to be into it hundred percent it's not one of those games that you know you can just pick up and play for a couple of hours and not touch it again, you know, for uh, for another couple of weeks. You know, you have to be invested into it. And it's just, and it's like I said, it's not a very easy pick up and play game because, like, there's a lot of difficulty spikes in this game. Some of the puzzles in this game are absolutely maddening, and they're incredibly insane, and they will drive you nuts. And you know, some of the boss fights, you know, can be incredibly unfair. And it's just that you have to put a lot of time into, you know, your your item management, your weapon management, your armor management, just to make sure that, that you go into each battle and you go into each boss fight as prepared as you possibly can. And then we have to get into the fact of trying to get, get the best ending in the game. And I don't care how good of a gamer you are. You need a guide. You have to take that gaming pride and just shove it aside. Because in order to get the best ending of the game, you have to do a certain amount of tasks at, at specific points in, in order to, uh, to trigger the best ending in the game. Because if you just play the game willy-nilly, and you know, more than likely you know, you'll, uh, you'll get the uh, B ending. And, uh, and that was one of my uh, biggest fears, you know, as I was playing, uh, playing this game, you know, uh, to completion, you know, for the, for the very first time, is, you know, I kept making multiple save points because I really didn't want to mess up. I, I really didn't. I think, I think on this playthrough, you know, uh, I think I made like five or six save points just because I was so paranoid, you know, about messing up. But... If you do your research into this game, you know, I think you'll come out of it with an incredible experience that, that you're not going to see in a lot of other JRPGs out there. And, you know, it's, you know, it, and, and it's kind of a crying shame because, like, I'm subscribed to a lot of JRPG uh, review channels, and... A lot of them have not reviewed this game yet. Now I know JRPGs, you know, take a lot of time, and you know, and they've covered a lot of other, you know, popular PS1 JRPGs, you know, such as you know the Final Fantasy games, you know, Gears, Breath of Fire, stuff like that. But you know, I'm going to call out. I'm going to call out some of these JRPG uh, game review channels. And what I want you guys to do is that I really want you guys to uh, to grab this game, and it doesn't matter. It could be the PS1 version. 
or it could be the PSP version. And I really want you guys to sit down and actually play this game and actually give it a try because, because I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I really would. And even if you like it or you don't like it, it doesn't matter to me. Because as long as you gave it a fair try and you took whatever out of this game as you can, regardless if it's positive or negative, that's the main thing. So, I don't know if any of these channels are subscribed to me, but you know, you can shoot this video along to them. But, uh, but, uh, but like some of the JRPG review channels that I really want them to really give the original Valkyrie profile a try, you know, is uh, Lady Pelvic, you know, from Pelvic Gaming. JRPG Jungle, Hellfire uh, uh, RPGs, you know, JRPG, um, Shadow Elite, and, uh, and uh, Tark's Gauntlet, I think, uh, does a few uh, JRPGs as well. I don't know if he's touched the Valkyrie Profile series or not. I haven't, uh, I haven't look, uh, looked that up, but, uh, and, uh, and uh, Super Derek as well, uh, uh, Super Derek's RPGs. So I'm calling all you guys out. If you have an opportunity, you know, to play Valkyrie Profile, because this pandemic is probably a good chance, you know, to 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 get some of these uh, long games played. And uh, and I really hope you you give that game a try. And you know, I would love to hear your thoughts uh, about it. Now, with regards to my playthrough, guys, for me, Valkyrie Profile is not completed. For me, I'm still working on my ending A playthrough. Now, I have gotten the best ending in the game. I have done the bonus dungeon in the game ten times to get the best weapon in the game. But what I'm working on right now is, is I'm working on the, uh, on the sound portraits. Now, what are sound portraits? Basically, every character has a sound clip. And, uh, and if you unlock all of their sound clips, then you get to see their character portrait you know, in the game. And it's a very daunting process because they have sound bites for everything. When they attack, when they counter, when they get hit, when they die. Spellcasters are very annoying because they have a sound clip for every great magic, for every spell in the game, regardless if it's offensive or defensive. So that's what I'm focused on right now. And I can't get every sound portrait in the game on this A ending playthrough. So, technically for me, in order for me to fully complete this game, I need to play it two and a half times. My A ending playthrough is going to be focused on filling out the sound portrait as much as I can, getting the A ending, getting all the best weapons, armor, stuff like that. And, uh, and that's my focus on the, on the ending A playthrough. When I get, when I play it the second time, I'm going to go for the B ending. And what I'm going to do in the B ending is that I'm going to focus on all the story aspects. You know, there are certain dungeons you can only do on normal mode that aren't even available in hard mode. So I want to do those dungeons that I never touched before. And, and there's a bunch of story sequences that, that you can actually get as well if you visit, uh, visit towns in certain chapters at a certain time or you know before you do certain spiritual concentrations now I didn't do that in the A ending playthrough because I was so paranoid about screwing up the uh, uh, the A ending that I just wanted to make sure I did everything right to get the best ending of the game so I ignored all the secret little story segments and um, and things along those lines so even though I don't have the game completed right now I'm still going to invest a lot more time uh, into it because my experience with Valkyrie Profile has been nothing but wonderful and you know and and I do own every game in the Valkyrie Profile series uh, I do own Valkyrie Profile Covenant of the Plume for the uh, DS but you know I haven't played that entry yet and I'm not even going to bother you know with the Valkyrie Profile uh, mobile game you know a lot of people you know often talk about that you know that you know, when's Valkyrie Profile Three coming uh, uh, coming uh, coming out? You know, I just I just find it really weird because I remember Valkyrie Profile Two for the PS2 going greatest hits. It actually went greatest hits. You know, uh, 
you can actually get a copy of Valkyrie Profile 2 with that Greatest Hits lo logo, which means it sold incredibly well. And then after that, nothing. Now, there is a uh, YouTuber that you can pretty much see a comment from him on just uh, every, uh, uh, every Valkyrie Profile video that's probably even online right now, and that's Terry309. He can tell you in great detail, you know, why there's never been a proper entry of Valkyrie Profile after Valkyrie Profile 2. You know, he, he knows a ton about this series that I couldn't even begin to give you an example of, you know, some of the stuff, stuff he knows. So, you know, if you ever watch any Valkyrie Profile themed videos, you know, rest assured you're going to see a comment from, uh, from him probably explaining why, you know, there's no Valkyrie Profile 3 here. And, uh, and things along those lines. You know, c could there ever be another Valkyrie Profile game? You know, who knows? But overall, you know, I always think Valkyrie Profile at its strength. The journey for me, especially playing this game, was a lot more rewarding than, than the actual end because I loved getting to experience each of the character stories and you know how they tragically pass away and you know even though you know the A ending you know it's really nice and it's really heartwarming but unfortunately it's really short and it's just I kind of felt cheapened by that and it's just you know I really thought for this epic grasping story covering like eight, uh, over eight or nine chapters of like getting invested into all of these characters' backstories and you know for the ending to be so short and so sudden and and, and you know even though you know the two, the two little bonus scenes you know you get at the A ending you know it it should get you excited you know to play Valkyrie Profile 2 but it's just like it's always one of those games that I always felt that the journey was much more rewarding than the actual end. And you know, it's, and you know, I really wish more people would actually uh, play this game. You know, it's like I said before, you know, I'm subscribed to a lot of JRPG review channels. And it's just, if you type in Valkyrie Profile Review, you know, to, uh, like uh, the two entries that will come up on YouTube are reviews from guys that I know personally. And, you know, and they're some of their highest viewed videos, you know, uh, you know, uh, Josh the Game Grinder did a uh, review on Valkyrie Profile, and, you know, uh, Bossom Birth did a review of Valkyrie Profile, and, and it's kind of funny, if you type into YouTube right now, Valkyrie Profile review, you're going to see those two reviews pop, uh, uh, pop up uh, before any of these other, you know, bigger JRPG, you know, focused uh, review channels. And, uh, and, um, and, you know, and for one, I really do want to thank, uh, you know, Josh, the Game Grinder, and, you know, uh, Jason from Boston Perf, you know, for actually covering this game. Because, like, I think it is a game that deserves to be played by RPG enthusiasts. If you love JRPGs, you know, you really need to play this game. And, you know, I think it's kind of unfortunate because I think too many people look at this game as, you know, it's rare and it's super expensive, so, you know, I'm not going to take it out, I'm not going to play it. You know, I looked up the price of this game right now, you know, it's it's kicking anywhere between $150 and $200, but, you know, do I think it's worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. And, you know, even, even, even if you want to be a little a little cost efficient, you can still play the, uh, you can still get the uh, the PSP version of the game. And, and, you know, this kicks around anywhere from, like, 20 to 60 bucks. So, you know, if you own a PSP, if you own a PS1, find some way to actually play this game. And because this game is, like I said, it is so unapologetically tragic. And I think it's one of the things that makes this, this game incredibly great. And it's just... I'm always going to love this game. I'm always going to love this game series. Will we see another entry in this game series? I highly doubt it. But, you know, for for what I enjoyed out of this game series and the fact that I actually managed to sit down and actually play it and actually enjoy it in, in all of its wonderful glory. And, you know, even even in this, uh, even in this uh, front cover, you know, Lennox crying. 
you know, you can actually see the tears, you know, running down her face. Because that's the best way I, I, I can sum up this game. It is un unapologetically tragic. And even if you do get the best ending in the game, and it does rectify everything that, you know, happened in the game beforehand, it's one hell of a ride especially if you want to give, uh, give this game a try for the first time. So I highly recommend it. Oh, didn't want to didn't spill that glass. So anyway guys, that takes care of another episode of The Completionist. And I just wanted to share with you my strange history of uh, experiencing Valkyrie Profile. But I am happy to say that, you know, I did finally get the game beaten. And I did get the best ending in the game. I'm just still working on completing it uh, right now. So it might might take another couple of months, you know, before I, I get this sucker completed for good. So anyway, guys, the final video for a while. I go back out to Alberta Thursday morning, you know, um, and like I said, I'm just grateful to have a job, you know, during this uh, pandemic. So, you know, you uh, you probably won't see any more videos from me until uh, until Christmas. But, you know, it's it's just the nature of the beast and it's just how my job goes. You know, I've been home for, you know, five months and it's just, uh, you know, I could have made more video content, but, you know, I've reached a point with YouTube right now, you know, I only want to make videos when I feel like making them. I don't want, want it to feel like a chore. You know, it's not as if, you know, there's a routine that, you know, I have to keep myself on. And it's just, in essence, I still want to keep my content fun, I still want to keep it lighthearted, and even if I don't get to make videos that often, you know, I really want to tackle on topics that are, you know, a little obscure, you know, uh, are, are, are a little different than what you normally see, and, you know, even though these days I'm more of a retro gamer than, you know, a current gamer, you know, at the very core, I'm still a gamer, and deep down, I'm still a completionist. So no matter what game I play, I'm always going to complete it to the best of my ability. So anyway, guys, I'll see you in December. And uh, let's all try to get through this uh, pandemic uh, uh, together. So as always, take care, and I wish you nothing but the best. Later.